All right, we're going to recap some key ideas from section 1.1 and 1.2 in this video. Evaluating functions, so function notation. Evalu evaluating a function means plugging in an x value. So let's see how that works. So we've got two functions here, f and g. So here's f, here's g. f of x equals 3x minus 10, g of x equals negative x plus 6. So in part A, we're going to find g of negative 12. We're going to evaluate the function g at x equals negative 12. So what that means is we go up to the rule for the function g, and we replace the x with negative 12. So over here, we're going to replace the x with negative 12. So we have to do the negative of negative 12. That's going to be 12 plus 6, so our answer is 18. And I'm going to circle up my answer so you guys can um, see it, okay? 18. Now for f of 8. Now we are using the function f of x equals 3x minus 10, so we're going to go to the function, replace the x with a what? With an 8. f of 8. So we go to the equation, replace the x with an 8, and we simplify. 3 times 8 is 24. Take away 10. We get an answer of 14. Now what that would mean is that the point 8 comma, oh, 14 is my answer, what that would mean is if we were graphing the line y equals 3x minus 10, the point 8, 14 would be on the graph. When x is 8, y is 14. An input of 8, we get an output of 14. All right, let's talk about piecewise functions. So to evaluate a piecewise function is a little more complicated because you first have to decide which piece of the function you need to plug the x into. And how do we decide? Well, let's look at an example to see how we decide. So to find f of 7, we're going to look at that x value. It's x equals 7. There he is right there, x equals 7. We have to go to the two inequalities. There they are. And we have to figure out which one of those inequalities does the 7 satisfy. In other words, which interval does the x equals 7 live in? Is he less than or equal to negative 1? No. He's greater than negative 1. 7 is greater than negative 1, so we use the equation that says 2x plus 4 is the rule we're going to use to calculate the y. So since 7 is greater than negative 1, we use the 2x plus 4. And we'll replace the x with 7. So we have 2 times 7 plus 4, that's going to be 14 plus 4, so we get 18 for our answer. All right, let's do the next one. So first thing we're going to do, we have to decide which interval negative 1 is in. Negative 1 is less than or equal to negative 1, but it's not greater than negative 1. So x equals negative 1 is our input. We look at the two inequalities. We figure out that negative 1 satisfies the first one. So that means we're going to use the equation y equals 3x minus 2. So we replace the x with negative 1 and we simplify. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Take away 2, we get an answer of negative 5. All right, part C, f of negative 4. Um, we're going to look at that x value negative 4, find out which of the two inequalities it satisfies. In other words, which interval does negative 4 live in. Is it less than or equal to negative 1? Yes. It is not greater than negative 1. So we're going to use the second rule. Oh, sorry, the first. 
we're going to use the first. I think I got a little freaked out by that announcement when I had to pause. Okay, so we're going to use the first one, 3x minus 2, but we replace the x with negative 4. We simplify, and we get negative 14 for that answer. Negative 14. All right, last one, f of 0. To find f of 0, we first of all look at our inequalities. Is 0 less or equal to negative 1? No. 0 is greater than negative 1, so we use the second rule, which says take 2 times your x value. x is 0. So 2 times 0 and then add 4. There's the rule. 2 times whatever x is plus 4. So we get 0 plus 4, and our answer there is a 4. And we're done. All right, let's do a graph of a piecewise function. So for this piecewise function, uh, we're going to make a table of values. And I'm going to graph each piece one at a time. So I'm going to start with the first piece of the graph. y equals 2x minus 3. So if x is less than 1, we're looking at y equals... x is less than 1, we're looking at y equals 2x minus 3. So I'm going to start my table at 1 for my x, and I want x values that are less than 1 for my first piece, so I'm going to go 1, 0, negative 1, values of x that are less. Okay, this point really needs to be in your table. Notice it says x is less than 1, but I need to know where that endpoint is. What we're going to do is we're going to find that y value, we're going to plot that point, we're going to leave it in an open circle. So when x is 1, I have 2 times 1 take away 3, so 2 take away 3, which is negative 1. When x is 0, plugging in, we get 0 take away 3, which is negative 3. And then when x is negative 1, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Take away 3, we get negative 5. Um, notice the change is going up by 2 because the slope is a 2. The slope of this line is a 2. So the y values are going up by 2 as the x's go up by 1. All right, that's the first piece. Let's go ahead and graph it. Sorry about the bells. We have negative 1, negative 5, which is down here. We have 0, negative 3. That's our y-intercept. Notice that y-intercept right there. And 1, negative 1. Notice we're following a slope of 2. Up 2, right 1, that's a slope of 2. Leave an open circle at the end there at 1, negative 1. And then we're going to do the other half. So there's the first piece of the graph. Now we're going to do the second piece. So now we're taking off from x is greater than or equal to 1, and we're graphing y equals negative 3x plus 5. So I'm going to take 1, 2, and 3. Notice this is going to be another linear graph. It's going to be a ray because we're only doing part of it. We have 1. When we plug in 1, we get negative 3 times 1, which is negative 3 plus 5 is 2. If we put in 2 for x, we get negative 6 plus 5, which is negative 1. Notice the change here. It went down by 3. That's because the slope is negative 3. Negative 3 times 3 is going to be negative 9, plus 5 is negative 4. And I'm going to make this one closed because the inequality right here, x is greater than or equal to 1, includes an equal sign. So we're going to do 1, 2. There he is. But now we're going to go down 3 and right 1 because our slope is negative 3. So we've got 2, negative 1. We've got 3, negative 4. And if we draw that ray, it goes right there. And there we are.